Auckland is built on 50 volcanoes. A new one could erupt at any time. If an eruption threatens, would you know what to do? Auckland's landscape is renowned for its two harbours and for its iconic cluster of volcanoes. Auckland is the only large city in the world built directly on top of a volcanic field. The Auckland Volcanic Field produced 50 volcanoes over the past 200,000 years. They range from explosion craters punched out in a few violent days to simple scoria cones with lava fields, to elaborate volcanic structures with multiple craters, widespread ash and lava fields that may have erupted for months. The largest volcano is the youngest. Rangitoto Island is as big as the rest of Auckland's volcanoes combined. It erupted only 600 years ago, leaving little doubt that there's still life in the Auckland volcanic field. About 80 kilometres beneath Auckland, there's a hotspot where the rocks partially melt. Hotspots like it elsewhere in the world can last for a million years, so Auckland's actually quite young. Over hundreds to thousands of years, enough molten rock or magma can build up that it starts to rise upwards towards the surface. If that magma reaches the surface, it erupts as a volcano. Auckland's hotspot produces a very fluid kind of magma called basalt, which travels to the surface quickly. A new eruption is most likely to occur where magma has not been released before, somewhere between the existing volcanoes. Unfortunately, we can't predict when the next batch of magma might start moving towards the surface, but we can detect it once it does. Rising magma can cause ground tremors as it forces its way past the surrounding rock. The Auckland Volcano Seismic Monitoring Network detects this kind of movement. The network consists of a series of seismometers that detect ground vibrations. And we should get a warning of days to weeks prior to an eruption. When a new batch of magma begins its ascent, no one feels the initial deep earthquakes that signal potential catastrophe. But when the Auckland Volcano Seismic Network detects the warning signs of a possible eruption, authorities begin to coordinate an emergency response. Within three kilometres of a typical Auckland eruption lies the devastation zone. To avoid loss of life, plans are made to evacuate everyone from a five kilometre radius of the impending eruption. Tremors in the days leading up to the eruption are widespread and increasingly noticeable. But it's only in the last day or two when the magma nears the surface that the exact location of the approaching disaster becomes obvious. The Auckland Regional Civil Defence Emergency Management Group advises all residents in the affected Auckland areas to self-evacuate immediately due to an imminent volcanic eruption. Take only essential items and pets. A hundred thousand people are evacuated from thousands of homes and businesses. The evacuation is completed just in time. The early stages of the eruption are the most explosive. The largest blasts shoot rocks kilometres into the air. Shock waves punch the atmosphere and cause waves that engulf the coast. Most devastating of all are violent base surges as superheated gas and ash roar out at over 100 kilometres an hour. The most destructive phase of an Auckland eruption is during the first few days. Most volcanoes started with violent explosions driven by 1100 degree magma coming into contact with seawater or groundwater. Once the water is sealed out of the vent, then things tend to settle down a bit. 
but a large volcano in Auckland could continue to disrupt life for months to years with volcanic gases, volcanic ash and lava flows. Volcanic ash is abrasive, acidic and blows long distances downwind from the volcano. It is a health hazard and makes driving dangerous. It is a serious threat to buildings. Ash threatens water, power and drainage utilities. Even small quantities of airborne ash endanger aircraft, so New Zealand's busiest international airport is disrupted. When I work near erupting volcanoes, I need to protect myself from volcanic ash. It gets into your eyes and um, it's just horrible to inhale particularly if you're an asthmatic like I am. So glasses and a dust mask or a damp cloth are essential. Basically, it's safest to just avoid volcanic ash by staying indoors. Ash has to be cleared from roofs because once it gets wet, it's extremely heavy. Water supplies, vehicles, machinery, pets, as well as livestock, all need to be protected from volcanic ash as well. Gas dissolved in the magma drives the most spectacular phase of the eruption. In another few days, high fire fountaining builds a scoria cone within the area already destroyed. As magma with less gas arrives at the surface, it pours from the volcano more gently. Flowing long distances from the vent, lava flows are relentless. They destroy everything in their path and cause fires. Lava poses little threat to life because it moves quite predictably downhill. But it could create new land and block vital shipping. A volcanic eruption in Auckland would be devastating, but after the initial turmoil, life could probably continue around the volcano. It would not be business as usual. Depending on where a new volcano occurred, motorways, hospitals, power, water and communication services could be destroyed. Volcanic disruption to Auckland's port and airport could ravage exports and travel earnings. An eruption could last for months to possibly even years. Recent research has shown that the Rangatoto eruption may have even paused for several years before lava flows built up the extensive um, lava field. A future Rangitoro-sized eruption would be fascinating, but it would be a major problem. The human toll from a volcano or any natural disaster will depend on how well Auckland's population is prepared. To be ready when disaster strikes, you need to act now. Make an emergency plan to keep you, your family and pets safe in a disaster situation. Practice your plan. Decide how you'll meet up if family members are at work or school. Telephones and internet may not work during a natural disaster. So, how will you stay in touch? Make a getaway kit containing these emergency survival items. You must be self-sufficient for at least three days. Drinking water is essential. You'll need at least three litres per person per day. Always keep a portable, battery-operated radio and spare batteries. Radio broadcasts will be the most reliable way to get up-to-date emergency information and instructions. Businesses need to be prepared too. Every company should have a business continuity plan that deals with the disruption, lack of essential services and possible loss of premises that a volcano or other emergency could cause. During a natural disaster, follow evacuation instructions issued by the authorities. Stay away from the hazardous zone and don't move if you don't have to. In the event of a volcano, Stay inside with all windows and doors sealed to keep volcanic ash from entering. We don't know when the next volcano will erupt in Auckland, but from the volatile history of the Auckland volcanic field, we can be sure there will be another one. Will you be ready?